Buenos días. A continuación, toma la palabra Genin Sol, responsable del Servicio de Agregación de Datos de la Fundación Europeana, con su intervención preparando el terreno de dónde viene la iniciativa europea y hacia dónde vamos en el contexto del espacio de datos para el patrimonio cultural. Good morning, everyone. Um, unfortunately, I have to switch to, to English now, and I hope you don't mind. And um, as I had a very good experience with the interpreters yesterday, and thank you for that, um, I hope they will also help you to follow today's session um, in the same way, uh, because we are, well, except Isabel, he will, she will present in, in Spanish, but otherwise, we will uh, present in English. Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting us here to, to this uh, conference, and uh, thank you also to the SPANA team for organizing this uh, conference. Um, I learned a lot already les yesterday about how you work, how, how the Spanish um, aggregation landscape looks like, uh, and how, how it's also probably going to develop in the future. So that was very, very, very interesting. That's, that's the only thing you can really see when you are on the site, when you're in, in the place of, uh, of where everything happens. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here. And we heard already a few words about your piano, but I would like to start by adding a few more and um, really making this uh, your piano morning and yes, uh, sorry, <coughs> before I get there. Um, and as I said, I learned a lot yesterday about uh, you, but I would like to learn a bit more about uh, you this morning, and I hope you don't mind I make this a bit interactive. Uh, I know you just came in, and some of you are just, just taking, taking your seat, but I still would like to, to, to get you moving a bit um, with, a, with a little icebreaker. And, um, I, because I don't know all of you, and there are a lot of unknown faces here, maybe after that it will change a bit. I would like all of you, if possible, to accept the, the, the colleagues representing in Algeda, um, to, to get up and stand up if you already have digitized your collections. If you are coming from an institution and you've digitized your collections. Um, if you can, can stand up, so I get an idea of how many of you are from an institution that have digitized your, your collections already. Uh, okay, there's, there's, <clears throat> so there's a mix from what I, what I see, this is interesting. Uh, keep, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing, um, because there are more questions coming. It's not the first question, uh, the only question. Um, so there's a, there's a mix. Uh, let's see, second question would be, is your collection already online? Um, can a user go there and, and view it? If not, take a seat, um, <laughs> and we will see. <coughs> nah, it's, it's not, not uh, okay. So it actually means uh, most of you who digitize your collection have brought it online already. This is great. Uh, third question. Um, who of you have published your collection already via Hispana or Catalonica or Euskarayana? Um, Okay, <coughs> it's like what I was, ex there are less and less, but that's still, um, it's uh, still of a mix. Uh, next one is, which of your collections are already in your piano? Have you published in your piano already? Or um, if not, you can take a seat a as well. Okay. Um, so from the 60 Hispana repositories we heard about yesterday, I have the impression not everyone is here. Um, so there's still potential for people in the room. I, is there a next question? No. Um, that was it for now. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was um, very interesting to see. Um, so I, I hope then uh, with everything we talk about, there's also a mix of experience and knowledge and uh, so in the room. So please also uh, 
ask questions if they, they come up. Um, I think there's room for questions at the end. Um, so, yeah, and if there's not time enough for questions also, we are also happy to share our contact details with you so we can also work together with the Spana and the other colleagues to, to, help, uh, um, to answer your questions and help you progressing with your digital journey from digitization, publication, and also hopefully one day we will all see you in your piano. Um, and uh, be in, in one place together, joined with the thousands of other institutions that are already working with us. Yeah, as said, this is a Yopiana morning. Uh, basically, uh, you have to, to live with us uh, for a couple of hours. And I will start basically continuing the story that we heard um, b before about uh, where we are with Yopiana, uh, before my colleague Isabel will show you some examples on use and reuse of data um, on your piano to also illustrate what the benefits are from publishing online and publishing with your piano. And then I will follow up with a quick, quicker intervention, so to say, about 3D, uh, which is quite a hot topic. Um, and uh, we heard about VR and XR this morning already. 3D plays an important role here. So uh, a few words about this and then after the copyright, we really go into, into business. Um, and we are kind of following up it also on the workshop that uh, happened yesterday, which um, I really enjoyed uh, following. Um, so some of that may already be, be familiar uh, to you when we talk about the open publishing framework, uh, licensing framework. We also touched upon like copyright aspects yesterday. And then um, Adina will conclude this morning with um, yeah, a, a very a more practical session on how we work at Yopiana, so how to, to, for, for, your, for you to get an understanding how your data get published on our site. And for those of you who have seen the Meta Sandbox yesterday, you will see the big brother of the Sandbox, the actual uh, Meta's interface that we work with. Um, and then we are also open for uh, questions and uh, hopefully yeah, we can then conclude um, with more insights and a better understanding of, of each other um, this, this day. Now, Yopiana, we heard about some history already. What I would like to, to um, present uh, quickly is like the problem space that we, um, that we, where we all came from. That was back in 2005. Uh, when the foundation was laid for what is now um, Yopiana. Um, it was clear that back then that cultural heritage data uh, was underrepresented on the web. Um, and it also was clear that institutions uh, worked in isolation in a very fragmented uh, landscape. <coughs> and also we have seen back then that the, 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 the principles that uh, are supported by our sector um, such as free access to culture, were under, under threat, like with initiatives like Google Books um, that felt a bit like we are leaving this field to a commercial player. Um, and this, this all led then to the setup of the, uh, well, back then, Yopana Digital Library, and uh, has uh, driven our, our work in the years 20, 2008 to basically two years ago, 2022, um, where we first developed like the, the portal that you also all, all know, um, and developed into the, the, the platform that was mentioned uh, earlier, where we are trying to really work um, with institutions across Europe uh, via aggregators like Hispana, Catalonica, or uh, Rizkeriana, um, to bring th these data into one common platform and then build additional service on top of it to, to engage with, with audiences to bring this data, the content, uh, to a wider audience than you, you possibly could reach uh, on your own. But times are changing. Uh, we are not alone anymore in this, in this space, and a new, new time has also started. Um, was a couple of years ago when the European Commission 
um, launched um, a, yeah, a call, like a, a new program to, to develop um, data spaces to really turn uh, the whole, whole system, uh, expand on, on everything we have done in the past and, and, and build on this to develop um, at least in our uh, area like 14 uh, so-called data spaces. And you see those 14 um, also on the screen. That's a data spread about skills and language and uh, agriculture and media. But of course, there's also a data space for cultural heritage. And this is what uh, Upiana is tasked to actually do now in the coming years uh, to develop from a platform that we have been uh, in the past into a data space. <clears throat> and it's a little bit of an abstract thing, this whole data space thing, and I can imagine you also may have lots of questions about this. Um, don't worry, we have those questions too. Um, but we can, we can also work together in also helping each other to understand this concept uh, better. Uh, what it for sure means that uh, we need to be a lot more open to also think differently and expand our frameworks that we currently have in place uh, over the coming years. Um, what it also means is that we need to even think into like more and new services um, that we can build on top of them, thing that we haven't talked about. Um, we can also think about other types of, of data that we are currently not uh, working with. So the data space is a lot bigger than what Yopiana currently is, uh, that's for sure. And um, it will come with a lot of challenges, but I also think that some of the challenges we currently have, you currently have, may be easier, um, may be possible to overcome in this um, context. Um, what is a data space? Uh, that, that is a very formal definition that it's, uh, that's um, published by the Data Space Support Center, which is like the, the underlying structure under all these like 14 data spaces that is giving like, guidelines, definitions, conceptual frameworks, um, and uh, things like this. And it's defined as a distributed system defined by a governance framework that enables uh, secure and trustworthy data transactions between participants while supporting trust and data sovereignty. So I think the key words here in the concept of the data, data, data space is sovereignty and decentralization. Um, to, the, it really comes with the, with the principle that um, you own your data, so you should keep the control of the data. Um, you should decide what will happen with those data in the future, and uh, which is like different than, than with platforms. Um, so it, it's something that is, is meant to be helping every institution um, to keep control over their data. How we will make that work, um, that's still a question to be answered in the coming uh, years. Some of you may wonder if Yopiana maybe is already a data space. And it's something that we, when we started this whole new adventure two years ago, um, people also came to us and, and said like, yeah, but you are a data space already in, in that sense that what I said before, keeping control to, giving control to institutions because um, Yopiana works since 2008 with the, um, with the principle that we don't store content on our side. We only have metadata in our database and using those metadata and the links um, in the metadata, we link back to the content stored on your site. So basically, you can decide to take your content down. Well, it, would re it will result to broken links on our site, but still it's a sort of control that you still have. We, don't, we never claim to own those data. So in that sense, we could argue um, it's, it's already what the data space um, should also achieve in the future, but it's not quite the same uh, yet because we don't want to have those broken links, for example. So we need to find ways where uh, we can enable this functionality without uh, breaking links, without disappointing users. Uh, and this is what we have to, to work on. Um, this is the current aggregation stream as you, as you know it, really from an institution 
via various types of aggregators um, coming to your Piana. In the future, it could look like something like, like this, where really data may uh, flow in different directions, uh, where you, the institutions, are in the center of, of this, and you decide, and the, the aggregators, including also your Piana, would decide which data we publish, in what way, and, and how we get them. So we need also understandings, technologies, protocols, uh, governance frameworks to, to allow something similar to, to happen. Um, I mentioned this note on new types of data, different types of data. Right now, your piano is really focused on giving access to content. So we publish metadata, we publish the links, uh, we give direct access to content. We've seen this yesterday, we've seen this more also during the day, but we know there's a lot more d data out there in the sector that has an audience where, where people can are working with. That also is important to provide maybe context to everything that we publish. Think about hierarchical data, bibliographic data, filmographic data, like libraries are full of bibli bibliographic data and those data uh, are never accessible in your piano. Still, there's a user, there's an audience for it. And there's also um, uh, probably um, these data could enrich what we have published, but we are not, not taking benefit of, of that. There's a whole new world coming up um, that already has a logo, collections as data. You may have heard about this, uh, where we're actually not publishing item by item, book by book, image by image, but really uh, an entire collection as a data set accompanied by um, sub, um, data sheets that have the additional information about those collections. And this is something libraries uh, are doing quite a lot. I'm not sure if anyone from the National Library is, is, is in the room. Oh yeah, <coughs> maybe something we can talk, ab uh, talk about because we, we, we see this as a very popular development. National Library is developing like data hubs, data foundries, and so on, for this purpose to really get their data sets out as collections as data. And then there's a lot more additional information out there, vocabularies and authority files. We've seen some of them also you have in your uh, systems, like the, um, the, um, the, the links that I think uh, Sarah was working with in the, in the presentation, um, where she built the contextual classes. Uh, uh, these are all information, this is all information that's out there that is currently only in your own systems, not accessible to anyone else. Um, and there's a lot more also data we could f share, and this is what we need to think about how we can do this and how we uh, want to um, uh, help the, the audiences that is out there to, to get access to those data. Um, yeah, so with the history of 15 years, a bit more than 15 years now, um, we definitely have a head start over all the other 14, 13, the other 13 data spaces that are under development, but we are not there yet. And uh, the European Initiative really is at the heart of that data space under development, and it really builds on everything that we accomplished over the last 15, 15 years. Uh, and when I say we, I actually mean not only the Open Art Foundation uh, with about 65 people based in The Hague, three of them you have um, here today. We is actually much bigger. It's the, uh, it in any case includes uh, the Open Art Network Association, but it also includes the Open Art Aggregators Forum. And uh, it, it even goes beyond this, so we are yeah, like I said, we, we in The Hague uh, are about like 60, 65 uh, people. The network includes more than like 5,000 um, members or around 4,000 uh, members. We have by now like 42 aggregators and number 43 uh, will, will come in a, in a few weeks with Oskar Jana. And we have also many thousand institutions all over Europe. Um, supported by the member states and the European Commission uh, to make this all work. So part of this is also the, the whole landscape of all the aggregators. So when I say we build the data, data space, I also include um, the, um, 
the, the agitators in the room um, working with Hispana and, and Catalonica already is part of the Yupitana Agitators Forum. Um, and that's something we, we should all he keep doing in the future. When it comes to all of you individually, um, you, you, you can also still play a role, and you still, I think, have a role uh, here to play as a member of the European Network Association, um, which is like the community of professionals around um, the aggregators, around the um, foundation itself, including a lot more than also a, a, a wide variety of, of, of skills from technical people, uh, people from... Um, yeah, educators, re representatives from, from schools, universities, R&D. So it's really everyone that has a stake uh, in this whole endeavor um, can be a member of the Network Association. Um, so you can also join communities, you can work together with your peers in your own country, but also in other countries. Um, you can also, in, to some extent, take the lead in developing um, th things that you have an interest in. Um, there's a way to influence the sector, stay informed, of course, that this is uh, maybe the first benefit you will, you will get, and also participate in the events that we organize um, all year round. And we have by now seven communities that re represent or reflect the skills that are, that are out there. There's a community about communicators, there's a community about impact, one about education, where Isabel made talk a bit more about um, this later. Copyright is a topic, so if that's interesting also for you, there's a community um, that you can join. Tech, very popular. We had the Ubina Tech Conference last year in, in autumn, uh, very popular event. So if, if you have an interest in technology development, this is the place to be. Research, of course, and also climate action, which is becoming uh, more and more important. Um, now and in the future. And I've said events. Um, this is not only the conferences we do, but also a, a lot more. Um, in particular, since the, the pandemic, um, there is a lot more happening also online in terms of workshops and webinars. And this is all things that you can also benefit from uh, participating, joining, uh, learning, and uh, also developing your own uh, skills and helping your partners, colleagues, and so on, uh, to do the same. So um, another facet of this whole ecosystem are, are projects, which are also not only limited to, to uh, a few participants. So in principle, you can all also participate or uh, think about which projects would be interesting. This is like a, a, a timeline of a number of projects that we had over the last uh, six years. Uh, so there are a couple of funding programs um, out there uh, that on a regular basis uh, also get, um, get through with projects that are actually in our sphere and ecosystem to help and support us. I have the feeling that they are coming more with also new programs coming on top with other developments uh, coming in place. So if there's also an interest on your side learning more about those projects, it's also something that we can we can help with. We have a dedicated team in the office that is looking into those project opportunities uh, more. And um, to conclude this part, um, you can contribute your data via Hispana and the other aggregators, and you can work that way with us. Uh, but this is also an, an opportunity for you personally, as a, as a person, to also join the network association uh, yourself. Um, and and follow what, what is happening. Um, join us for yeah, conferences, for opportunities, join the communities, uh, and engage your, yourself in, in this context. Uh, this is open to everyone, so that's why I'm, yeah, as a, as a um, encouragement for all of you to, um, if you are in, interested to follow, to see more of your piano, uh, that's the way to, to do this um, on an individual basis. Um, for you uh, at no cost and no risk, so please feel free to sign up if you are <coughs> interested. And with this, I'm concluding my uh, initial uh, presentation and will st stop for now and hand over to my colleague Isabel.
Thank you.